In this video, we're going to pick up where we left off in the last video and attempt another strategy at building a hello world type client web part. I'll come back to Visual Studio. I'll right click on the project, choose add, new item, scroll down, pick client web part, and I'm going to call this web part baseball stats for reasons which will become obvious as we move through the demo. And then I'll click add. And this time in this dialog, I'll choose to create a new web page for our web part content. So this time in the Solution Explorer, you'll see we've got the baseball stats node with the element manifest. That's the element manifest for the client web part. And we also got a baseball stats ASPX page in our pages module. That's what's currently being shown in the text editor. Now there are a couple of important things to note about this page. Let's go into full screen. The first thing is that we have the allow framing control. Here we're saying it's okay for this page to be used in a client web part. And then we have an HTML tag, we have a head tag, and if we scroll down, we have a body tag here. So this page is effectively just an HTML page. Now we are loading some SharePoint libraries. Let me scroll up again. You can see that we're loading jQuery. We're also loading Microsoft Ajax and the client object model. And then we have some JavaScript to load some styles to ensure that we're consistent with the UI of SharePoint. All right, let me get out of full screen and add code behind for this page. I'll come to our scripts module. I'll right click and choose add new item. From the web section, I'll choose JavaScript file. We'll call this file baseball stats and I'll click add. For now, I want the implementation of the baseball stats page to be the same as the default page. So I'll open up app.js and I'll copy this code to the clipboard and paste it into baseball stats JS. Now recall that a moment ago I showed you that the baseball stats page is effectively just an HTML page, which means that we're not using the SharePoint master page, which means that a lot of the SharePoint libraries aren't loaded. As an example, this script is calling execute or delay until script loaded. The JavaScript file that implements that function isn't being loaded. Other functions like get URL key value that we've used won't be available to us. Underscore SP page context info won't be available to us. We don't get the form digest automatically loaded in the page. So this is something you need to be aware of when you're building client web parts. There are two options you can use to address this issue. One is to find the SharePoint JavaScript library that implements the functionality that you need and add a script element into your page to load it. The alternative is to implement the missing SharePoint functionality yourself. We'll be doing this later on in the module when we need a function to read a value off the query string. So it turns out that I don't need execute or delay until script loaded in this script. So I'm just going to replace that call with a call to initialize page. So I'll copy this to the clipboard and replace that with a call to the function. Now I'll come over to baseballstats.aspx. The first thing I want to do is add a script element that will load baseballstats.js. So let me scroll up a little bit here and then scroll down in the Solution Explorer and drag and drop baseballstats.js into here. And then I'll add the type attribute by copying it from one of the other elements. The other thing I need to do is add the UI. So let's go over to default ASPX and scroll down and grab this div and paragraph tag. Come back to baseball stats ASPX. Go to the body element and paste those inside. And the last thing I want to do is open up the element manifest for the baseball stats client web part that's here. And I just want to change the title from baseball stats title to just baseball stats with a space in between the two words. So now we're ready to run to see if our baseball stats page implementation is working correctly. And what I could do is what I've done before, which is deploy, then go to our web part page, then add the web part. But that's pretty time consuming. And also you can't debug that from inside of Visual Studio. So what I'll do is make baseball stats the default page. In the Solution Explorer, I'll scroll down to the app manifest, open that up, and then change the start page from default.aspx 
to baseballstats.aspx. I'll do a save all, and then I'll run. And as you can see, we're getting an error, JavaScript runtime error, unable to get the property of pen child of undefined or null reference. I'm going to click continue here. Then I'm going to come over to Internet Explorer. And you can see that even though we got the error, we are getting Hello Rob Windsor. Let me press F12 to open up the IE debugging tools. And notice here, we're running in IE5 compatibility mode. Now let's go over to the other instance of IE and press F12. And notice it's running in IE10 compatibility mode. And that's because the SharePoint page has a meta tag that tells it to do so. So what I'm going to do is come back to Visual Studio, stop debugging, go to baseballstats.aspx, scroll up, and inside of the head, I'm going to add a meta tag to tell IE to run in IE10 compatibility mode. So now I'll run again. Now our full page experience is running correctly. Again, running your page first in the full page experience can be a huge time saver. It enables you to quickly see if you have any errors, and it also enables you to debug your code in Visual Studio. You need to use the browser's debugger when you're working with the client web part. Let's go back to our web part page, close the debugger, Refresh the page, put the page into edit mode, click add a web part, add our baseball stats web part, and it was too quick to see, but the text in the web part started out as initializing, and then the client object model code ran, and that changed to hello Rob Windsor. So while the functionality is very minimal, the implementation of this version of our hello world web part is much better than the implementation of our last version. That ends this somewhat extended Hello World type demo. In the next video, we'll be adding the user interface to our Baseball Stats web part.